Through the first two modules, I've asked you to consider learning from a foundational view of learning theories and also from the holistic view of learning environments. In this module, we continue to keep uh, both perspectives in view as we start from the holistic view of conceptual frameworks and then focus more closely on outcomes, activities, and assessments. The reason I keep moving from the holistic back down to the foundational is that it is crucial for us to find a balance between the two. If you focus too closely on the details, you can easily lose sight of the bigger picture and perspective. And similarly, if you focus on the big picture, you can miss some of the details that are very important. Finding and maintaining that balance is key, especially if we start as we start moving from theory into practice. Now, in this module, we'll also continue to explore the importance of making meaningful connections. I want you to consider the difference between collecting the dots and connecting the dots by listening to a short section of Seth Godin's TEDx Talks, Stop Stealing Dreams. Are we asking our kids to collect dots or connect dots? Because we're really good at measuring how many dots they collect, how many facts they have memorized, how many boxes they have filled in. But we teach nothing about how to connect those dots. You cannot teach connecting dots in a dummy's manual. You cannot teach connecting dots in a textbook. You can only do it by putting kids into a situation where they can fail. Grades are an illusion. Passion and insight are reality. Your work is more important than your congruence to an answer key. Persistence in the face of a skeptical authority figure is priceless, and yet we undermine it. Fitting in is a short-term strategy that gets you nowhere. Standing out is a long-term strategy that takes guts and produces results. If you care enough about your work to be willing to be criticized for it, then you have done a good day's work. The idea of connecting the dots or making meaningful connections was a topic of many discussions I had with my colleague, Dr. Bob McElveen at ACU. The core concepts I'm sharing with you regarding the conceptual frameworks must be attributed to Dr. McElveen. I've just added and expanded and formalized the ideas that we talked about. An expert's conceptual framework is fully developed and multidimensional. The larger blue dots represent concepts that the expert has learned and gained, and the small dots between those concepts represent some meaningful connections. The expert can enter into the conceptual framework at any point um, and understand how everything works from that perspective. In contrast, a novice's conceptual framework is only partially developed. The novice has limited uh, understanding or is missing most, or if the concept is brand new, sometimes all of the concepts. Some of the concepts that they do have could be wrong, um, and there are very little broken, uh, very little connections or broken connections if there are any connections at all. There are four key concepts to facilitating the growth of learners' conceptual framework. First is providing the context for learning, which includes introducing the fundamental conceptual framework components. Second is creating the environment where the learner can start to make the meaningful connections between those concepts. The context for learning and the learning environment uh, come together to be, uh, act as a scaffold that enables the novice to uh, learn to see and understand what the expert sees um, and understands. Third is modeling the learning process needed to make those connections and add new concepts and see the patterns that lead to solving problems. Fourth is mentoring and coaching the novice and building and expanding uh, their conceptual framework. Understanding the process of moving from novice to expert is extremely important when we build our courses or other forms of instruction. Getting the learner to grasp key concepts relates directly to understanding course goals and outcomes. And the alignment of those outcomes and activities with assessment is a cornerstone of course and program mapping and planning. In this module, you'll create an overarching learning goal and develop a course or slash an instructional uh, course uh, map that aligns learning outcomes, activities, and assessment. This course map or instructional map is one of the many parts of your significant learning environment that you will plan and develop. This plan should prevent you from falling into the recipe and regurgitation model of learning where all, all too often we simply deliver content and disengage students give it back to us in the form of tests or other limited summative assessments.